In this video, I'm going to show you seven mistakes golfers make with the putter. I'm going to show you how to fix them so you do not make those mistakes anymore and therefore hole more putts. Now all these seven points I'm going to talk about are equally as important, especially number seven. But let's start off with the first one. And it's actually before you go and play golf. How many times do you see a golfer make the mistake of getting to the practice putting green, throwing a few balls down and just simply hitting to a hole with, if I'm honest with you, not a lot of structure, just basically for no reason whatsoever, just putting them towards a hole. That's not, not too bad. However, if I'm dead honest, that's not the best time to, the best use of time before you go out and play. The best thing you should do is work out the speed of the green today the day that you're playing golf and to do that dead simply set up to the side of the green and you're going to start off short and without really thinking about where the ball's going to finish in line direction your objective is to get the ball to finish as close to the first cut off the green as possible this is a great drill to help you figure out the speed of the green that day so you can get a really good gauge that one's a great one to start off with and you can go further back just trying to work on pace of putts so that's a little bit hard so i'm learning from that i'm getting knowledge of the speed of the greens before i go and play today the trick is don't make the mistake of just getting to a practice putting green that's pretty good and aimlessly hitting towards holes with no real structure take time learn the speed speed of the greens that day and that simple drill will help you do just that so out on the golf course a mistake i see golfers make is don't take enough break into consideration so i've got a little right to left put here i see a lot of golfers make the mistake of not giving enough respect to that break so for example if i put this just on the right edge and put it towards the hole the lightness i've not read enough and it starts moving away from the hole it's never stayed on the top side you might hear it on commentary on tv it's the the pro miss is to try and get it finishing past the hole on the top side as it starts to swing so next time you're on the golf course read more into it this is a right to left foot yes yeah, so i'm going to aim slightly higher up on that hill there's advantages to that the ball's going to be falling towards the hole and generally, golfers will underread it as opposed to overread it. Feel like you're giving it more break, start swinging more towards the hole. You're not always going to get it in, but you're going to give yourself a much better chance. Oh, how many times playing golf would you have your playing partners go, oh, good effort. At least you got it to the hole, never up never in now as much as there's some truth to that statement that last one never up never in i've also left myself an unbelievably difficult putt coming back now for most amateurs have this idea of minimizing your mistakes yes you want to give it a chance of going in there's nothing wrong with that but you'd rather have a tap in for your next putt than that horrible six seven footer coming back even though you had your playing partners go great effort at least you gave it a shot what you need to be aiming to do is get it as close to the hole as possible. Give it a chance, yes. But if this ball finishes a tapping distance away, I would rather have that put every single day. Now your playing partners might not be impressed with that and go, you didn't give it enough of an effort, but believe me, I'd rather tap that in for par than try and hit that return put, which is much, much harder. This length of putt, a lot of golfers hate. And they make some fundamental mistakes. Because on a putt like this, you're thinking to yourself, well, there's no reason to miss this. It's fairly short, there's not gonna be a lot of break in it. There's no real reason why it should be missed. And because of that, we then fill our mind with negative thoughts. We'll be stood over this golf ball thinking, oh, please don't miss. Imagine what this is gonna do to my scorecard. Imagine what my playing partners are gonna think of. When stood over a putt like this, and guess what? That doesn't particularly fill you with great confidence. That's a big mistake. What you want to be doing is replacing all of those negative thoughts with some positive reinforcement. Here's a really great tip. Whether you do your practice puts to the side 
of the ball or whether you do it behind the golf ball. What I'd like to do is imagine that every single practice stroke is the actual shot you're about to hit. So as I take my practice stroke here, I'm imagining that's the ball that I've hit and it's rolling and it's going in the hole. I do another practice put, it's rolling, going in the hole. Another practice put, it's rolling, going in the hole. And every single time, I'm almost hearing the ball going in the hole all the time. That massively raises your level of confidence. Then when you stand over the ball, all you're gonna do is repeat what you've already seen. You know it's gonna go in, you've got that confidence, and you can knock it right in the middle of the hole. Don't make the mistake of thinking negatively, replace it with positive reinforcements. These next three are super important. So many golfers, when they put towards a hole and it misses, do this. As soon as they hit and it misses, head up in the sky, hand on the face, looking at the playing partners going, can you, can you believe that missed? Problem with that, and this is the mistake, is now I don't know what happens at golf ball once it missed. And we can learn a lot from what happens once it missed. How did it break? Was it going downhill, uphill? We need to learn from that. You watch the best players in the world, when they miss a putt, they are watching it go past intently because as soon as that ball misses, they want to know what it's done. They want to know how it's broke. How, how did it swing past the hole? How did it break? Because then you can use that information to hold the putt coming back. Don't make the mistake of just looking away. Blase, study from even the shots when it misses because it'll help you hold more putts on the return. Everyone knows when you hit a driver or an iron out the middle, you get the best performance. We might not do it as often as we'd like, but when we hit it, we just know it's perfect. There's no difference with a putter. Let's picture you've got a 30 foot putt. If you're hitting the middle of the putter face, you're getting the best, most consistent ball speed and the most consistent roll. As soon as you start to deviate from that center, to hit more towards the toe or the heel, performance will drop off. Your ball will finish nowhere near the hole just by simply not hitting the middle of the putter. Dead simple tip to help this. A couple of pieces of blue tack, one on the toe, one on the heel, and practice hitting the middle of the face. You can do it at home on your carpet, you can do it out before you go and play. It's a great drill to help you find the middle and therefore get more consistent rolls and hold more putts. I'm gonna show you how this old manky tea peg that I've just found at the bottom of my bag could help you put better. One of the mistakes I'll see a lot of golfers make when they put into the hole, they just put to the hole as a hole. The idea, you wanna aim small, miss small. This is a great drill, try this. Next time you go and play, instead of actually aiming for a hole, stick a tea peg in the ground and put to that. This idea that you're trying to minimize what you're aiming for. Because if I only just miss that tee peg, I know that's pretty much gonna go in the hole. If I knock that tee peg over, I can absolutely guarantee that would have gone in the center of the cup. Don't just aim at the hole as a hole. Aim small, miss small. And then when you go out there and play golf, it'll feel like you're putting a pee into a giant bucket. Another thing you can also do, even if you're at home, it's a great drill, you can just flip the tee peg over. Stand it up on its other end like that and you can still put to a horrible manky tee and improve your putting even when you're at home. 